Hello everybody, Mealworm here. We're back at it, as always, in the mole. Still out in the asteroids. I've been doing a lot of asteroid mining lately. I've got some tips and tricks to show here. We're basically just gonna do a full lap of mining out here in the asteroids, and I'll cut out all the boring and incoherent parts, but I'll pop the little card up on the screen with the build for the day. It's basically a helix on the front, two Hofsteeds on the side. The right side helix is kitted out uh, just for pure power, the Riegers. The left side's got a bunch of focus modules for those smaller rocks. The helix has got Riegers and a Surge, I believe, or a Stampede. One of those two has got an active module. Today we're in probably one of the crew, yeah, one of the crew L2 spots that I showed off in my earlier video on solo asteroid mining in the mole so this is where we're at today i've got a couple new revelations that i've learned while i'm out so let's get into it the first is going to be actually finding the rocks obviously you can do your scans like you normally would oh wow we're actually pretty damn close to a couple of them so <laughs> these are pretty close let's scan i'm going to scan one that's kind of far away so you can kind of get a hold on what I've been doing to do this. So this one here, that's 9,000 away. Now, every now and then the RS signatures won't appear, which is obnoxious. But in this case where they do, we can tell 1850 is an asteroid. And I'll pop up the red monster sheet here that's got all the different asteroids and what they're actual signatures are. I personally have not committed much of this to memory at all. I'll usually keep this up on a monitor or sometimes I'll just go full chill mode and I'll just hit rocks. I've been mining in a way that doesn't, uh, it's not profit oriented. <laughs> it's much more chill. I like to fly around. I like to munch rocks. So that's what I've been doing. But what you can do is, so you'll see, we'll be widened up and we'll get just the blobs. We'll zoom in closer and eventually you'll get that icon. Those are, looks like we got two here. Now what you can do is if you zoom in all the way and you'll see on the left side, the signal strength bar, if that appears, you can actually scan it. You're not gonna get any real information, but you're gonna get the icon. Now that icon is imperative because it will actually remember that icon. This one's kind of far away. I wonder if we'll get the icon out of it. We will, cool. So now, when we scan this area and we're zoomed in enough into the zone, we'll get that rock icon back. And this is gonna help us make sure that we're only going towards rocks and that we don't um we don't lose our way. I'll see if I can find when we're looking at the other signatures, there we go. These ones here that are just even thousands. These are not rock signatures. They might be uh, space debris or what have you. They are not real rocks. So if you see those that end in a clean thousand, don't even bother, don't even head there. So that's another rock. That's a couple rocks actually. I only know that from my time doing this. There we go, see two rocks. So what we can do is we'll nose over and we'll scan boop and we'll get an icon those two might be too close to each other to get both icons yeah it looks like it is but that's a-okay what we're gonna do is even though there were some really close to us we're gonna scan these get their icons and then we're gonna fly on over to this you're not always gonna get the icons like you can see here if you're too far away or your scan is too wide you're just gonna get the zones that you normally do these little blockies um, but you can always zoom in and rescan it to get that icon back I'm gonna change my speed limiter really quick I like to keep it somewhere in the 250 ish range that seems to work the best for me personally. If we just passed by a rock that was pretty close. So one of the things that I'm also gonna recommend, especially if you get into a cluster like this that has multiple rocks, is even though 
eventually when you get close enough, the rock icon will show up. It's just scan it anyways, so you can get the the forest thing. Ah, oh, see, all those like nine signatures that we got, those were that ones that ended in the even thousands. And this is actually a great uh, demonstration. If we zoom in and do the scan, boop, they disappear. Sometimes, like maybe just the one that you're scanning will disappear. So we'll do it again, boop. And see, nothing happens. We don't get any rock icons. That's also just a good way to be sure. This is helpful if the RS signatures aren't appearing. So that's just a good word to the wise and a good way to find a lot of rocks without having to, you know, travel 15, you know, 10 kilometers to go and figure out that where you were heading wasn't actually anything. So now we've got some rocks here. And there is mining mode in the pilot seat of the mole, so go ahead and utilize that when you're scanning. Our server FPS is decent. We got a little baby rock. Every now and then this will happen, where it says inert 100. Obviously that's a lie. We don't have 50 SCUs of inert. You can just come off of it, come back into it. Backslide, we might actually crack that. Titanium is pretty nice as a secondary too. So let's also scan this guy and see what we find. There we go. Ooh, and some gold. Excellent. That one's a little bit smaller, but gold is pretty dense, so that mass is pretty high. We'll get that one second. We'll pop into this one first. This was 8,000. This might just be on the tail end of what we can do with the soft laser, but we're going to try it anyways so same sort of principles apply uh, get it into the high 40s low 50s and then nose on up until that rock is below the dashboard line like that you can use free look to do that or if you've got a head tracker that will help too i like to nose up a little bit extra because in zero g's the rocks will spread a little bit further so normally getting it into can i free look and getting it into this zone here is really what we're eyeballing for so we're there we're gonna try this with the soft laser first the focus modules have made it a really enjoyable experience. Having the massive optimal window has led to a lot less angry breaks. It does cap out um, around this strength, so in the worst case scenario we'll get to the other side and use our other Hofsteed. And with the Hofsteed's bonus to the optimal window, it's still a pretty comfy break. It's not like the uh, the helix, which just obliterates the uh, obliterates the window. All right, we're here. We're gonna get on in. Let's take a look. This is probably oh easy. See, so we're in this one, the uh, dual focus and the Hofsteeds, and we're cracking an eight thousand, no problem. This should notice pretty good that backslide. Boom! Big optimal window. Love to see it. So I've actually been spending a majority of my breaking in this laser here because I'm able to crack um, 8,000. I've done like 12,000 before on less dense materials. Um, so that's been really nice. That massive optimal window has been just a huge help to making sure that we're able to get everything that we can out of these rocks. And this should net us quite a bit of money, which is nice. Although, like I said in the intro, or if I keep that part of the intro, the way that I've been mining lately has not been as a as a profiteering activity. Uh, I've been, you know, I can go and make money in a myriad of ways. ERTs and drug cargo is just big big bucks right now so I can go and I can make my money that way when I mine it's because I find it enjoyable and I like what I'm doing and that's added 
you know, the ability to be more patient with the process. I've tried to fill my hold as fast as possible to try to see, you know, how much AUEC per hour I can make in, in the loads. And, you know, while it is fun to see how quickly you can do something, it's really nice to be able just to slow down and just become proficient in the activity and with the way that this game will be expanding and the roles that mining and materials will be utilized for in the future when there's you know, more economy and base building and things i suspect that these materials are actually going to have more specific uses in which case you won't be mining to make money you'll be mining to gather resources. And while, you know, filling holds fast and getting quick turnarounds is helpful for that, proficiency will pay off in the long run, comparatively. So I've just been taking my time and trying to get good at what I've been doing, and I've thoroughly enjoyed all of it. So we've got a little bit there. How are we doing over there? That's that gold rock that we won't be able to crack with this. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll scoop you up too. So not too shabby, I say. Some good scoop in there, almost 13 SU of Bexalite. Not bad at all. Let's go crack that gold rock and see what we can get out of it. So now this is, so now you'll see our icon has gone away. So that's obnoxious. But what we can do is, when it's working, which it has been these last few days, which I've been very, very pleased about, is here on this side, we've got our laser range. This is a little funky because the laser's not being manned, so it's in its inserted position. So getting this into the into that low 50s that we had before, and then doing that same sort of thing, nosing up and getting it past the uh, dashboard line, will still follow. You'll lose that laser range indicator because it's pointing straight ahead. It's in the the, the uh, in position essentially. If that laser was being manned by someone, then it would always give that readout, and also you could just have the person running the laser holler at you how how close or how far away you are, but. We trudge along here. This should hopefully net us quite a bit of gold. It d gold does not have the best cluster modifier, so we might end up, I say might, we most definitely will end up sucking up quite a bit of titanium through this rock, but gold is so lucrative that I'm not too worried about it ultimately. Good, right? Within that optimal. Obviously take it slow at the beginning trying to find what laser percentage does this kind of thing so that that like mid 20s where it was zero and then a little bit more and then zero again that's what I that's what I like to call stable laser and that's kind of where you're gonna end up hovering once you get the charge up to the optimal zone and this is just where it comes down to patience just taking your time and not trying to rush things. If I'm out mining and I end up screaming something really high into the overcharge and I'm able to turn my laser off, I'll let that rock completely lose its overcharge. Just to make just to get good breaks and like I said before, I haven't been mining for profit. I've been mining because it's fun and I want to get good at it. And the more opportunities and chances you have to learn how to do that with high proficiency, then less of an issue it becomes in the future. It's all just a patience game there. Now that was 11k. We're probably going to have to end up breaking this a few more times maybe? No, actually. I'm just checking the outlines of the rocks because that's going to be the, the prime indicator of what is and isn't scoopable. 20% gold. We'll see about that. I realistically will probably scoop that because it's gold after all. Oh, 50% gold. Yeah, we're just going to take that out, right? But yeah, I've been living in this mole uh, 
through the holiday break. And, you know, by the way, anyone who's celebrating holidays this time of year, I hope things have gone well for everyone. Oh, yeah, baby, look at that. Nom, 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 nom. All that gold. So we're basically probably going to end up just eating this whole rock. Is that? That is just one big funky shaped rock. Oh, let's get it. The lasers do filter out some of the inert, so you can kind of take that out of your calculations if you're the type to, you know, think, okay, if this is 5 SCU and it's 20% that, 20% this. Juicy, juicy. Like I suspected, <clears throat> we're sucking up a lot of titanium here. And you can always choose not to refine it if you're running a smaller cargo ship, or maybe you just want, you know, bang for your buck sort of thing if you're taking trips down to the surface areas to go sell off your ores. Uh, sometimes I'll do that and I'll use my constellation to haul materials, or other times I'll just go on a spree, do three, four, five trips, and then even, <laughs> I mean, fair and exchange takes anywhere from 20 to 30 hours for these loads. So then I'll essentially rack these up, wait a few days, and then take almost a full C2 load down to like New Babbage or Orison. And I've been mining in the, the crew L2 spots that I showcased in the earlier video that I made on solo asteroid mining. This ladder is giving me grief. So I've actually just been refining at, oh please, full 360. So I've just been refining at crew L1 because it's close. And honestly, I practically just live in Crusader these days. If I'm doing uh, ERTs, I'll try to do them in the yellow asteroids. It's close enough to Grim Hex. If I want to go get up to some shenanigans, I can do that. I've just been really enjoying it. And also, if I'm prospector mining, I'm usually on Daymar anyways. So it's been nice. been able just to do literally everything that I want to in the Crusader system. So now, let's find some more rocks. What I like to do is find some points that are kind of close to each other. It's like here we got like a little bit of a cluster here. Now they're not going to be like super close to each other in the long run of things, but getting, you know, we're going to have to travel 10, 15 kilometers to get to a single rock. That if we find some that are just a few kilometers away from each other, then we don't have to go through a whole process of traveling 10 kilometers every time we want to rock. Now there's actually three in that spot, which is quite nice. So this is what I'll do is I'll sit back, I'll scan, and I'll get I'll get rock reads on them. Get the icons up, and then I'll fly in that general direction and now I know that I'm within five ten kilometers of multiple rocks and that allows me one to spend less time being annoyed at trying to find good rocks and more time mining and also affording the opportunity to get a little picky even though we've tried to pick a spot that doesn't have a lot of really small rocks, you'll still all find them here and there. And it makes it a lot less of a hurt if you find one small rock and you're like, okay, well, it's not worth the time to, you know, maneuver, jump into a laser and scoop two SCUs of trash, <laughs> ultimately, when you know that within a couple thousand meters at the most, you can have two, three, four other rocks that you can go and take a look at to see if those are gonna be better for your mining. The other thing too is it, this when the scanning, I'm gonna overshoot that a little. Ooh, maybe not, wow, I'm good. Um, lucky, actually. One of the other things too, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, baby, oh, baby. We found a juicy, Quantanium rock. Quantanium is tough to break, 
because the instability and resistance is pretty high. But we're gonna do that. We're getting this rock for sure. And we're close enough to a couple other rocks that it's not gonna be an issue when we start with that volatile cargo timer. Cool, in between the legs hop on out that was 12k with quantanium uh the soft laser is not going to be able to get into that so we will need to get the doors to open we will need to get into the other reeker laser this actually might be a good opportunity to whip out one of these wave shifts Let's do it. Let's let's do it. This wave shift. What the wave shift is going to do is it's and I'll I'll hover it over again in here. I keep a couple modules on the ship at all times, just for the sake of things. There we go. Laser instability, reducing and increasing the charge window size. It does reduce the the charge rate, but if you're patient, that's not the button I wanted. But if you're patient, that's not going to be an issue because you're getting a good break <clears throat> and a good break with something like this when we've got a load of quantanium, it's going to pay up. And that's what we're, that's what we're really here for. If you, <laughs> the buggiest, come on, there we go. Let's get you in traversal mode. There we go. So if you just wanted to make the most money out of this, you could just bust that thing open and scoop it up as quick as you can. I've been, come on, give me the, give me the indicator. Thank you. Chunk. I've been having this happen where the <laughs> gadgets just want to be upside down. Alrighty, let's get in here and do some rock hacking so that's gonna have to move over track the field range this way there we go and you'll get good at this too kind of learning what does what let's get this back out on back obviously having a uh, co-pilot makes this process a lot easier but it's certainly not an unfeasible activity as a solo player we're gonna splat on the it's the I really wish the elevator would have its own gravity like I get that it's not inside the ship but I really wish it would have its own gravity you know if you're <clears throat> like if you're loading up uh, cargo ships and stuff in space and you get into the ship the gravity kind of kicks on it'd be really nice like uh, what am I thinking of reclaimers when it's cargo deck is down even though it's in space there's still some gravity on it which is really nice just gives you a lot less uh, wiggly vertigo issues okay that's we're within optimal we've got our wave shift icon it says that it's an easy break so hopefully we don't overcharge this too much but for an easy rocket sure does want some juice oh golden that's beautiful. That's magnificent. Now, we're probably gonna have to do some secondaries, so I'm just gonna preemptively go get in the other laser. Oh my god, that flew way out. We'll probably have to reposition as well. That thing went flying.
Yeah, I've been really enjoying this since I learned how to get around some of the scanning oddities and I don't know if there was a background net patch or something. I've noticed that those icons will actually come up for me, which is really nice. And every now and then I will get... Oh, you just barely out. Oh, you are. Oh, I can't nose up to that. Okay. Like I said, we're have to reposition a bit. Now we're pretty far out of the optimal for this, but I'm not too worried about it because it's nothing we want. That's actually fantastic. No quantanium in one of those rocks means that we're going to get a lot better quantanium out of these. Cool. So that can get scooped out right. That can get scooped out right. Let's see what's in it. Yep. 29 resistance means we've got some quant in there. 22 means there's going to be quant in that too. Not a whole lot, but we'll get that because... Oh my god, I can't hit that rock either. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. So I'm actually going to do... I'm going to do a full re... I can't believe that thing broke so big. With no angry. Like, no red on that crack. That was wild. Just one of the... Uh, idiosyncrasies of asteroid mining. But by and large, when you're finding rocks, oh my goodness, between eight and 15,000 regularly, it's a lot nicer than just going and sucking up the little bitties that you'll find on a surface. Personally, highly, uh, highly subjective take on that one. So let's back this out. Let's scan these and see what's in them before we reposition for it. Sixty-six percent. That's like, yeah, nice, nice, nice. That's that garbage rock. This is that other one that we couldn't scan. Sixty-eight. Yeah, a lot of quantitative in that. So we want all of these. Was I able to scan that one that was behind? Yep. We're good on that, good on that. Yeah, so we want this whole cluster right here. And let's see if we can't hit them all with that. And those all look like they were scoopable. I didn't take a mental note of that. But when they're all scoopable, it doesn't matter which lays you get into. And I've seen uh, loadouts, especially if you're getting into the multi-crew side of things, where you have a laser that's um, actually kitted out for scooping, you know, filtering the inert materials more, because there are modules for that. Going for the, the longest optimal range to, so you can scoop quickly. It's been, it's, it was a really interesting kit that I wouldn't mind trying if I ever decide to do some multi-operator. You gonna, you gonna turn on for me? There you go, thank you. Can I? Yep, I can. Alright, let's make sure I can scoop everything that, is that the Corundi? Uh, yep. So yep, scoop, 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 scoop. Wonderful. We'll begin that bottle cargo timer. Oh, you're so far away. Can I get you just barely inside the max? No. Dang it. We'll have to get a little bit closer to that one. We got 25 minutes, though. And we're only going to need one more rock after we eat up this quantanium. But yeah, Quantanium, after it's been refined, sells for like 20 plus thousand per unit. So this rock alone is going to net us over over 100k. Even, even going to Cruel 1, which is garbage for 
quantanium refining, we're, we're going to be able to make a pretty fat on this. Which will help offset the fact that we had to fill a third of the hold with titanium for the near 15 essence of gold that we got. Oh, you're too far away as well. Uh, yeah, let's just scooch up to those. Not a bad find. Pretty good luck for the first take of the morning. Come on, when the server FPS is low, ladders become so recalcitrant. It's ridiculous. Oh, yep, see that? Come on. There, good. Goodness gracious. One of these days, I'll have to see if I can stay on into the Wii wee hours of the morning to see if I can get a video of what uh, mining at really high server FPS looks like because oh my gosh it's 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 magnificent <laughs> you know when the when the the charge bars are smooth and they're not jumpy and oh we didn't get our our wave shift. Well, let's scoop this up and then <laughs> see if we can find. I didn't follow my own rules. I always say, go get your, go get your gadgets right after you break. <clears throat> I didn't follow the rules, which means we're probably gonna end up losing some money on that because they're tiny and they're not the easiest thing to find. But let's scoop this up. We'll pay for a new wave shift with this quantity. We might actually just fill up on this quantum right now. And if that's the case, I'll probably spend some time and see if we can't find our wave shift. What are we at? 94.8? Wowie's out, that's fantastic. You know, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there because. We're not gonna, it's not gonna be worth the trouble to go find either a small rock or break once or twice to get less than two SCUs of something. Um, you have to think about, even though we're not mining purely for profit, you do, do still have to think about your time as an economic resource. And that's everyone's bottom line it's going to be a little bit different on what they think is worth it. Is that our thing? Oh, there it is, it's right there. Let's go get it. Everyone's bottom line is gonna be different on how much they feel their time is worth. And that, you know, that comes down to the, the patience or maybe the actual goal. If your goal is to fill your hole with the most expensive materials, then yeah, you'll spend some more time you know, being picky about your rocks and what you're scooping, but you'll also make a bunch of bucks on that. Eh, well, that will be a monetary lesson that I won't forget. Pro tip, pick up your gadgets after your first break. So you also don't have to worry about your volatile, volatile, volatile cargo timer or any of that nonsense. Man, I really... It's unfortunate, but that's okay. That's the rock we don't want. So now we're going to hoof ourselves over to Cruel one just for the speed of things. I can pro if I, and if I really am just gonna be living in a crusader like this, I could probably just put a faster drive on, but 
I like the ability to be able to go wherever I need to. If I was in a min-maxing mode, I'd probably go all the way to my kill five just to get the biggest return <clears throat> on that refining. But I don't mind. I'm going to go back to crew 01. I'm going to pop these suckers into the refinery. I've also noticed when you're quantum jumping, if you're getting, like if you end a jump and you're looking right where you need to be, and your quantum drive is on cooldown, you have to turn it off and back on again. If you let it charge while the cooldown goes and you try to jump again, it bugs and it freaks out. So I'll land, immediately cycle, and then go through. And I'll show you what happens if you don't cycle your QT drive for this, because we're going to hit crew L1 and then we're going to have to go to the station after, and we'll probably be aiming right at it. And I'll show you. So yeah, we're looking right at it, the calibration starts immediately, and the cooldown is happening. So if we wait for the cooldown to finish, and I and I jump, boop, it just goes away. It gets really weird, so you have to cycle it once. And if you do that right when you land, your calibration will still finish before the cooldown anyways. So it's just a non-issue. And it goes without saying, but in case you didn't know, my wonderful, beautiful viewers out there, Quantanium is volatile. You know, we've got our timer here, but it's volatile, volatile to the point that if you bump your ship with raw Quantanium in it, your ship will have a tendency to explode, or the Quantanium will explode with you and your ship. So be patient. And we've got plenty of time, depending where you're refining. I would make sure you know how long it takes for you to QT in. And like in case you didn't know, when you load up your a QT route, this is how many seconds you'll spend in QT. So that's just one of those things. That's how many seconds you'll spend. Plus, you'll want a few minutes to get to your hangar. And like obviously, I'm. I'm slowboing myself to no, the hangar okay. because I'm not worried about the timer, but understanding how close you can cut it will be uh, will be a really good tool. You can also use um, Urkel.games to look at when you're fitting uh, QT. Yes, I know, I know. So that right there, that is because we're at half essentially uh, 12 minutes you can see the bottle cargo light turned on and it is a scary sound but it's not as bad as it sounds but we are gonna touch down nice and smooth and we'll worry about any repairs and refueling after we get back because our goal right now is to get into the hangar get our ship stored. Welcome to the ASOP vehicle retrieval system. Store them all. Please visit Excellent. Us again. I've had just a stupid amount of luck with Quantanium, because I hit Quantanium with the uh, Prospector video too, I think. Which was fantastic. So we're going to set up this work order here. I refine everything. I throw it all into my uh, into my Taurus or my C2 if I've got a bunch. So let's get that quote. What are we looking at? 26 hours, almost 40k. Not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed. So let's do another one of these. Welcome. To the ASOP vehicle then retrieval I'll do system. Some, some editing. I'll cut out, Vehicles cut out the boring bits. Although I guess, let me know in the comments. I mean, I could do, I could do a full uncut mining trip if you want to see the boring parts, start to finish. I don't know if I'm, 
interesting enough to hold your engagement for that long, but I'll do it. I don't mind the editing process. I'm getting better at it. sun out here in front of the ambitious dream station looking good also i just really like watching this part bring the gear up mm. get out of vtol oh that's so good that's such a cool ship i should buy some skins for it that I've noticed is getting to crew L1 to crew L2 is usually actually a bit of a straight shot. This is probably the laziest QT experience ever. It's just for the majority of the jumps you're just literally beaming in a straight line. Which is nice. You can get the, the scenic view of the ship which is always a good time. Let's think about other other tips and tricks that I've learned or developed. Um, one I think will be the velocity indicator. This little carrot that I'm let's go for a little bit. This little guy that's wiggling around. This indicates the, the direction and heading that your ship is going. Now, obviously, in zero g, you know you can float to the left and be looking straight. And so this just helps you know where you're aiming. There are a couple options for it, and I think it's off by default. But under game settings, if you scroll down until you get to this pilot section, and what we're gonna look for is pilot velocity indicator. There's always on and always off. I'm using always on. Always off means it's not there. Fading means the velocity indicator will only show up if your velocity is outside of kind of the center reticle area i like to have it on all the time because it lets me move forward and point this not at the, close to but not at the rock i'm headed to so i don't just smash into it i want to see if we can't find here we go there's a couple that are close to each other that's a 1900 7400 that's actually a couple rocks Nope, not yet. We might be a little too far away, which is fine. Let's get an icon on you. Come on, there you go. As long as you have just a little bit of the signal strength bar there on the left side, you'll get that rock icon. Uh, you will have to periodically ping a little bit though. Let's widen out and see that's 7400 yeah we're within 10 kilometers now so i should as my ship grinds to a halt Ooh, maybe four rocks i'm gonna get a read on one of them boom okay cool make our way back this way and then we'll cut over and take a look at those four rocks that we found so velocity indicator uh, keeping that velocity indicator off to the side or below it, just not right at it, means that you can not smash into it because that's uh, that's bad vibes. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. Now you can, if you want it, you could scan it in scanning mode, but just go to mining mode. We have some Bexalite in you, so. I guess we're scooping you. Back it up. Oh, you're so small. Not really worried about what distance we are from it. Let's get you on. Scoop a scoop. And our first rock. 
Now let's go check out that. I think that was four rocks at that other one. Of all the things to get trapped on. A ladder in the mole. Oh, we made it. We made it. Uh, uh. <clears throat> yeah, servers have been rough. But scanning's been nice, so I guess it's a <laughs> you win some, you lose some, apparently. We're gonna zoom out wide and ping. And we should see close by. See now like the, the RS signatures are all gone, which is obnoxious, but see that icon showed back up because we got a read on it once. Even though the icons I've showed up here, I'm going to do uh, a manual blip on each of them so that we'll get their icons again if we need to. Because if you're relying on the icons that show up automatically, those don't seem to save the same way that that first rock that we scanned saved. If we're lucky and we roll the dice well, we can fill up on just this node here because um, if I show the footage from the last trip that we just did, that was only like three or four rocks I think at the most. Greasium is kinda, kinda meh, kinda mid, not gonna lie. 5k mass, more Greasium. These M types must be, uh, the Greasium, Greasium, Greasium? I don't know. I'll read it again next time I see it. Yeah, so you can hear the scanning, but it's not like updating the HUD. You can just cycle your mining mode. All copper. Oops, all copper. 17k. Okay. On the bigger side, please have some juice. All copper again. That's unfortunate. Well, one of these was a big old chunky one. Is it you? Yeah. So this is 20k, so we will more than likely have to jump into the helix for this one. But we will try it out in the helix first. Because optimal window. Optimal window for me has been everything. I obviously want, you know, a strong laser to get those bigger breaks. But what I'm finding is a lot of rocks in that 8,000 to 15,000 range that the Hofsteeds, either of the Hofsteeds, have no problem breaking them. It's been nice not having to use the Helix a lot because it kind of is like a sledgehammer. It's just a, a very, very destructive uh, medium which is not a problem. We'll take it at 20k. Come on, rock. I have faith in you. I have faith in myself. Believe in the me that believes in the rock. Bada bing. Go get in the soft laser. We'll go clean this up. So, yeah, see how small that laser, uh, not laser, how small the optimal is. That's another uh, fun bit about Agresium is that. But with these focus modules, that should expand to an acceptable amount. I really like a rotary knob for this. I'm using one of the sliders on my <clears throat> T16000Ms. Which is cool, and it's fun to use them, but they're not the most uh, fine things. 
obviously you can always just use the scroll wheel on your mouse but I like to keep my hands on the sticks or on my my hotas or hosas whatever um, as much as possible just for the immersion and I'm used to playing uh, a lot of elite dangerous in VR where I could do everything by touch <clears throat> which was always really nice really fun for the immersion we're gonna eat this up 100% on the Agrisium was actually really nice. I don't know if Copper has the best cluster modifier, but... The resistance and optimal window that Agrisium... Uh, the, the increased resistance and the reduction in optimal window that Agrisium does makes it um, a pretty tough sell sometimes. So it looks like there's actually two bits in this. So let's scan the front one and hope it's a good rock. That means that we can break it and get out of the way. Yep, perfect. Be another one of these. So what you can do in a situation like this, it's obviously a lot easier in a prospector. You can use the fact that there's an optimal range to your advantage because there's a reduction in power when you're outside of your optimal range. So in a situation where your your lowest charge level is still charging the rock too fast for your liking, you can purposefully put yourself outside of optimal range to to help reduce that power even further. We love it. And we're just gonna eat this whole rock too, because that was almost all the Gracium as well. Because we got those big rocks of 100%, I'm not uh, holding out a lot of hope for these other rocks. But we pulled 25 SCU out of that outright, so I'm not too bothered by that at all. Mm, decent amount in that, actually. Let's see. I guess now we'll find out how loud feathering is on my uh, sticks here. Do some feathering here. So, what you can do is just mash the uh, laser button, and that will. You have to do it fast enough that it keeps your optimal window open because the optimal window adds from the top and from the bottom. So, if your if your laser's on and the optimal window is large, but you're at the high side of it and you turn it off. That optimal window shrinks, meaning your charge level is now in the red. So that will take some getting used to. Just go and practice it, ultimately, um, until you get a really good feel for it. Nice, good break. Good break there. Cool, so that is that. 30 SEU of Agrisium from that. I am not going to go and break that other small one because I want to find some better stuff. Yep, nothing there either, so I'd love to be able to get a signature read. That's like, I think that's the one thing that is really missing from this loop right now. I think if the actual uh, scanning values would show up, that would just elevate things so much further because then you could spend more time committing to memory what the the readings are to their asteroid types. Obviously, there's always variance within each type of the asteroids, but you know, focusing like the M and the Q types, you know, to get better uh, materials out of them would be a lot more feasible. Oh yeah, you are big. Let's see. 35k of Laranite. We are not going to be able to bust that open. Let's try it. Always down for a challenge. Partly because 50 SUs of Laranite sounds pretty damn good. 
Also, in case you didn't know, if you have a multi-tool with a tractor beam, you can press B, Bravo, on your keyboard and go from attachment to traversal. And then when you hit something with it, it pulls you towards whatever you're uh, aiming at, which is great. That's how I, that's how you saw I just hit the rock and then juped myself on over to it. Yeah. No dice. Well, now we know. Let's go and get that Sabir back. I am going to recommend that you keep your gadgets on your ship <clears throat> since you'll, uh, since if you saw my surface mole mining, uh, you'll see you can blow those right off of your character if you crack angry. So when you get back, put it back in the ship. You'll keep a nice supply of them that way. Search continues. It's cool rock. If we had some buddies, we could definitely crack that. These two nines, did we? Those were those multiples. So see that the icon showed back up because we gave those a hard scan before. Oh. So we didn't we didn't get an RS read on these, so we don't actually know if they're rocks or not. So what we'll do is we'll scan one, boom. Okay, now we know. Now they're rocks. Same as before. Get hard reads on all of these. Cool. We got four hopefully juicy rocks for us here today. Woo! <laughs> I might cut that out. <laughs> 64 mass. Okay, I was gonna say, there's no way. I mean, 375 is still pretty small. Hopefully these aren't all just little babies. Really, all copper again. We are rolling low on this trip. That's what we get for coming back with a bunch of quantanium. The rocks give and the rocks take it away. There we go. 27k. We actually could we probably might be able to bust that one. We'll have to try it. But let's see what we got in these other ones. Ooh, a bunch of gold in that one. We'll take it. We'll take it. 20k of gold about a third of that yeah so that's gold doesn't break super well if we can break this with a hostied then putting an optimax on it might be really helpful for us but i'm just gonna crack her open see how we do all right Show me the money. Perfect. We are in optimal. It is crackable. This might be doing what I've seen before where it doesn't uh, visually increase the optimal window. Yep, there. Do you see how it was charging the optimal while it wasn't in visually in the optimal window? See, let's see if we drop below the visual window. See, it's charging there. Just a weird, weird thing that happens. Um, where the optimal window visually doesn't show up, but mechanically, it's still there. See, it's charging right here. I don't know. It's just a weird thing, but you gotta use it to your advantage to feel like you're being extra safe. You don't even have to get it into the optimal window to... Wow, you broke huge. Okay, we're gonna get in the pilot seat, scan all of these, and then get into a location where we can do the secondaries and the scooping. Oh, you're just scoopable. Are you serious? I mean, you're garbage, but that's kind of cool. So what 
what normally dictates what I think this is a head cannon what dictates if you can or cannot scoop the rock is if it takes up less than 10 SCUs of space so when you have something that is really dense it has a much higher mass without taking up so much space in the hold which is how you get something like this that's 4.4 thousand in mass but scoopable because most of it is gold which is dense so it versus if you had um, something that wasn't as dense that's when you see you have to break like a 1200 size rock which is kind of ridiculous to have to do and it's really hard not to just obliterate it with your laser so it looks like all of these are scoopable that's fantastic we might just end up eating a majority of this rock might skip that one be kind of picky here because we've got that other monster so we'll skip that one but we'll get you we'll get you and definitely that one what about you we'll skip you so we want these three here in the middle and then we're just gonna jump in the front side laser and eat those up and then we'll see if we can crack that other big rock Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not do that. Which one of you was it? It was you. There you are. There you are. 27k is going to be a challenge. Your huge rock. Definitely gonna have to reposition after the helix smack. Ooh, might be too close. Oh no, we in. Impossible. put a sabir on this to try it i'd like to i want to know what our kind of upper limit really is all right yep see every time you next time i'll go upside down first and then we'll see what it does yeah, baby. Whoa, 96. I'm good. Okay. Let's... Let's do it. Oh, challenging now. That's promising. That's really promising. Pop the surge module. Ah, yep. Adios. Wait for this to explode. Oh, most of our rock. That's unfortunate. Oh, whoa. Okay, but there's 27 SCs of barrel right there. So even though we destroyed it and obliterated everything in sight. We still got some juice out of it, so we should be able to pop onto our left side and scoop that up. That's not too bad though, honestly. A full 27 SC of a barrel. There's nothing to scoff at.
And so beryl also is less dense than gold is. I mean, gold is one of the most dense things. So <clears throat> you can see where we could scoop 4,000 SCU of gold because it was less than 10. 2,500 mass barrel is over 25 SCUs because of that mass. So it's that's that's how the density and the mass and the scooping kind of play into each other. Why do you, do you think it was in the other mode? That was that's another thing. If the server FPS is really low, or the the BWN on the display info that I usually keep up in the top right, if that's really low, it won't. It sometimes won't register that you changed mining modes, which can get dicey. Are you? No, you're all just a funky shaped rock. Okay, that wasn't too bad actually. We got a fair amount of barrel out of that. The mole is, she's, she's a thick one. She can take a couple hits when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the cracking angry of things. I think these were all ones that we scanned before, these ones that are close by. And this, yeah, this can happen. Oh, hey, look, so we got, yeah, see, if you get a close scan on it, once like we did with this that big 35k it'll come back up which is uh, awesome we didn't get any scan on that so these i think are fresh rocks 10,000. so that like those ones that end in, in flat thousands those are nothing um those are either uh uh ship debris or something it, they just don't exist those are the ones that i kind of showcased in my first video before i realized that either before i realized that you could scan things at a distance like i've been doing now or when scanning just outright was not cooperating let's see we've got 13 scus ish a little under 13 actually yeah, let's just eat this whole thing up, eh? Your little baby. Feather this bad boy. Let's see how loud it gets. You're flying off into space. Um, please slow down. At least let me scan you. Go on. Yep, we got it. I saw that the uh, <clears throat> the resistance was, was 65 right before it got out of range, so I just went and scooped it out right. 23 mass. So that's 713 micro SCU. Oh, you're two pieces. Okay. All copper. Little bitty rocks, all copper again. We got that one chunk that was all barrel. I didn't see how much because it was flying away from us. Yeah, I'm not Hmm, do we look for a rock? 
get this last success EU out of the way. Let's do it. We scanned some rocks that were pretty close by us. So let's see if any of those will be nice. And if not, we'll head back to refinery and unload. Okay. Well, see? It's nice. They don't always... Unfortunately, the, the boxes, the little box icons that we're seeing right now, those don't always show back up. So you might have to strafe around a little bit to look for like the cloud like where it says like that 12.1 12.0 that like cloud of signal you might have to strafe around to look for a cloud of signal that's really close zoom in on it a little bit and then you'll get your icons back gold yeah baby okay that will fill us up if we get get some juice with the gold 7k might be probably still be able to do that with the soft laser Nice and close. Could become a problem if things are hiding, but it doesn't look like any bits are gonna hide from me. Oh, 100% gold. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, are you also 100% gold? Ah, the rock gods are kind. Okay, give me another 100% gold for the last 0.28 SCU that we've got left in our hold. One, I have faith. Ooh, 41% is going to be pretty high, actually. Gold and inert. We'll actually filter out some inert, so we might scoop that one if this one is not a full 100%, which it certainly is not. I'll grab some of you. And we're full. Nice, not bad. Let's head home. A little crew just because all my stuff's there. That's going to conclude our recorded trips for the day. As always, please leave comments if there's things you'd like to see things you don't like i don't mind editing these in a way that people like to view them i will probably do some more prospector stuff i've been wanting to do some videos on rock mining but frankly the rocks have been uh, buggy and obnoxious i might still do it but i've been having way way too much fun in the mole lately just living out here in these asteroid fields and munching up rocks in my free time so Please uh, like, leave a comment, go and subscribe. There'll be plenty more videos. And uh, as always, a happy new year, and I will see you all in space.